The world of Warhammer is a dangerous place, filled with ancient secrets, mighty creatures, and fierce warriors. But nothing inflicts more fear in the hearts of the common folk than magic and the fear of the unknown. Though many do not know it, all magic originates from the realm of chaos. In the furthest north, as taught by the scholars at the Colleges of Magic, stands a colossal gateway to the dimension of nightmares and demons. From this gaping maw spews forth unnatural winds and mutating dust. These winds are charged with hidden energy that flows throughout the old world like an immense serpent unseen by most humans. But there are some individuals born with a strange ability to feel the movements of the powerful winds of magic. And it is this power that the wizards employ when they are casting spells. Those with the gift, or curse, of second sight can perceive these energies as they emerge from the northern wastes and flow into the world refracting into eight different colors of magic and strangling the different lands with unseen power. To try to fully understand magic is to invite madness and venture into the unknown. Long ago the study of magic was forbidden in the lands of the old world and all men and women who saw visions or could perform miraculous deeds were burned at the stake. All races deal with this powerful energy and make use of it in different ways. But in this video, we will explore how humans specialize in these practices through the Imperial Colleges of Magic and employ their power to serve the Empire. Throughout the existence of the Empire, magic has been one of the most important aspects of battle, calamity, and mystery influencing the lives of men and turning history upside down. It is safe to say that wizards in the old world were gifted individuals with the ability to feel magic and draw from it with spells that manifested these raw powers into the real world. This made magic a very personal thing for the ones with this unnatural ability and each mage made with this power whatever he or she decided was most appropriate. This was seen as witchcraft, and death was assured for the ones caught practicing these strange customs and rituals. It was until the Imperial Colleges of Magic were established in Altdorf by the High Elf Archmage Teclis, at the request of the newly elected Emperor Magnus the Pious. In 2304 IC, that magic became a field a gifted individual could actually study and properly follow on a clear path in the quest for perfection of these arcane arts. But it would take a great catastrophe that almost ended the entire race of man before the use of magic could be allowed within the Empire. Far north of the Empire of Man, a land known as the Chaos Wastes extends. It is a barren wasteland polluted with evil sorcery and ever-flowing powerful magic. It is a place filled with monsters, demons, chaos worshippers, and more mysteries than any could ever tell. It is from this realm that the winds of magic, also known as Aether, come from. In a terrible conflict now known to mankind as the Great War Against Chaos, Creatures that thrive off these strange winds of magic, and thousands of marauding Norskan tribes marched south against the Empire of Man, united under the banner of the Ruinous Powers. This resulted in a devastating war that almost destroyed the entire human civilization, if not for the timely intervention of Magnus the Pious, who accomplished the great deed of uniting a fractured empire and rallying a massive army to confront the Chaos forces descending from the north. As well as the efforts of his High Elf ally, Teclis, in harnessing powerful magic spells and using them effectively against the hordes of the Dark Gods.
After the war, Magnus saw the importance of magic as an asset that could be effectively used against the enemies of man. He requested to Teclis the establishment of an official institution within the Empire to help harness this power and teach, with proper guidance and methodology, the various beneficial uses that magic could bring to the service of the Empire. As one of the most powerful magical practitioners in the entire world, Teclis knew the dangers that this could bring if the powers of the winds of magic were misused by the race of man. This thought was even more concerning due to the fact that both elves and humans had spilled each other's blood in past conflicts. But at the same time, these same humans had adapted on the fly, faced against total annihilation by the forces of chaos, and had managed to show, to some degree, a level of comprehension and an attitude that they could too harness the powers of magic to drive the ruinous hordes back. More than that, Teclis understood that to persevere and fight against the terribly powerful forces of the Dark Legions, they could only stand united as elves and humans. If the race of man were to fall either to the temptation of the Dark Powers or to the edge of their blades, then Ulthuan would inevitably be next. As even grudging allies to the elves, the humans could prove an important safeguard in any future war against the Chaos Gods and their many servants. After some thought and deliberation, the Imperial Colleges of Magic were founded in Altdorf in the summer of 2304 of the Imperial Calendar, and the ban against sorcery was lifted. This important occurrence was not completely well received by the common folk though. Many still saw sorcery and magic as witchcraft, and many riots ensued while some others fled the city in fear as the High Elves worked their mysterious arts to alter the very nature of the city of Altdorf to accommodate the new college buildings. Order was swiftly established in the streets, but the foundation of the new institute had changed the city forever. The magic used to alter the very fabric of reality made the city of Altdorf somehow more difficult to navigate, and citizens were left to traverse its labyrinthine streets by relying on landmarks rather than a true sense of direction. Riders were sent out to every corner of the Empire, offering a full pardon and training to any and all that knew or suspected they had an affinity or ability with any form of magic. Many magic users across the lands were compelled by strange dreams and visions to make their way to Altdorf, where they could further their understanding of this power. Word of the newly founded institution, where Imperial citizens might be properly trained in the full secrets of magic and spellcraft, began to spread like wildfire. Any magical practitioners who were found too far gone down the road of corruption and taint were swiftly eliminated and vanished. The taint of chaos would not be allowed in any measure, shape, or form. Many men and women, be they noble, merchant, or poor, who found themselves to have any affinity with magic, had to face the dilemma of reporting themselves to the Colleges of Magic, or continue to hide their gifts. The responsibility to report all magically sensitive people to the Colleges applied as much to scholarly, noble, and mercantile families of the Empire as it did the peasants. It was often very hard to hide such abilities in the Empire's populated cities and the Elves' incredibly profound sensitivity to movements of the Aether enabled them to sense even the smallest conjurations by the pettiest human spellcasters for leagues around them. Even if they were able to hide these powers, once the choice of attending the colleges arose, it was far safer and convenient to go to the colleges for an education than continue to hide and risk being accused of witchcraft as it was established that all magic practice outside the colleges was prohibited. 
So it was that many potential and capable wizards traveled willingly, or were taken by force, to the city of Altdorf. When teaching humans how to channel the energies of magic, Teclis came to one important conclusion. They were incapable of learning and utilizing more than one of the winds of magic at once, with any degree of safety, even with careful and dedicated study. Thus, not one, but eight Imperial Colleges were founded to tutor the developing wizards of the Empire in each of the eight types or colors of magic that existed. The early novices were taught by Teclis and a handful of his own loyal and capable wizards, who told their students that although magic is volatile and dangerous, it could be controlled and purified by a trained practitioner. They also taught their pupils, those who would go on to be the first patriarchs and magisters of the Imperial Colleges, that the raw power of magic blew into the mortal world in the form of eight winds with eight colors, all representing a different force or facet of magical energy. Each college having its own traditions, eccentricities, and distinct sorceries. The Light Order those who give themselves to the study of the white winds of Hish. The magisters of this order, or hierophants as they are sometimes known, trained to refine their abilities to heal, protect, and use blazing light magic to banish the darkness of both reality and the occult. This order, above all others, is renowned for the grace and discipline of its students, and its complete and utter opposition to the darkness and confusion that is chaos. The Celestial Order. Those who study the lore of the heavens are constantly looking skyward to the stars. This stargazing has solidified the name they are most commonly known by, Astromancers. The disciples of the Celestial Order are prognosticators and seers without equal. They can read the skies and foretell the fortunes of others. Some can even stretch their powers to touch the upper atmosphere and control the weather, bringing heavy storms and thunder that seems to come to life out of nothing. During battle they are most valuable for their clarity in making correct decisions, and their power to summon lightning from the sky, or even call upon meteorites to smash their foes. The Golden Order studies the wind of Cayman, the lore of metal. Cayman itself is drawn in greater and greater strength to heavier elements and metals. Greatest of all is gold. The magisters of the Golden Order are widely known as alchemists, practicing such sciences as physics and chemistry. They are commonly used by the wealthy elite of the Empire for their ability to transmute precious metals. The wizards of the Gold College make many powerful magical artifacts, such as scrolls and seals imbued with enchantments, and potions which can heal the sick. There are also powerful offensive spells that can, for example, turn a man into a lifeless statue of gold or molten metal. The Jade Order busies itself with the lore of life, the wind of Giran, and the practitioners of this order are commonly known as druids. There were those who dismissively called the work of the Jade Order soil magic, especially in the early days after the college's founding. This is far from true, and only comes from a place of ignorance, as the druids are learned in the ways of agriculture, flora in the natural tides and flows of the seasons, and by extension, the life force flowing through all living things. They are often found near rivers, forests, or any place where the natural forms of life seem to flow freely around them. There are stories that these wizards are somehow connected with animals and forests, using them to locate any approaching enemies and making their passage more difficult, or stopping it altogether. 
One of the convenient powers that a Jade Wizard commonly has is that of healing fallen soldiers with pure life force, being able to restore their wounds with a spell. The Amber Order works to understand the lore of beasts. Its great shamans of the Wind of Gur are coarse and unrefined. Dressing in furs with talismans of bones, feathers, and amber beads. Theirs is the magic of the wild. The unnamed and untamed locations of the world are their favorite places. They can control great beasts and even communicate with them. Yet this order is difficult to train in, as the amber wind of Gar cares little for the civilized and ordered mind. A wizard of the Amber Order can assume the strength of the wild beast. They can control the rage of a hulking devourer towards their prey and induce terror in their enemies during battle. The Bright Order's mighty pyromancers seek mastery of fire through the study and manipulation of the Red Wind of Akshi. Since their abilities allow for the manipulation and control of heat and fire, in forms both natural and unnatural alike. Their magic is the least subtle, but also one of the most impressive and violent. The College of the Bright Order is situated amongst the burned ruins of Altdorf's East End, as many explosions and failed experiments have consumed chambers, houses, and even failed apprentices in fire. In the field of battle, Countless foes have been completely consumed by the fires unleashed by a well-trained wizard. They are very temperamental and very capable of turning the battlefield into an inferno. The Grey Order delves deep into the lore of shadows, working secretively in deception and obfuscation. The Shadowmancers of the Grey Order fully give themselves over to the Grey Wind of Olgu to cast spells of concealment, illusion, and sometimes even unseen death. They are amongst the most mistrusted type of wizard by the common folk, who often call them trickster wizards. These mysterious individuals often serve as diplomats, spies, and even assassins, tasked with finding and eliminating the networks of illicit organizations that work within the shadows in the detriment of the many structures of the Empire. In this work, their spells of persuasion, distraction, concealment, and deception are of considerable worth. The mysterious Grey Wizards are often deployed to deliver important messages throughout the Empire. It is not known how they are able to cover very long distances in such short periods of time. This particularity has made them especially important when it comes to the effective communication between Elector Counts, Captains, Nobles, and other important figures within the Empire. The Amethyst Order seeks to know all things about death, for theirs is the way of the Amethyst Wind of Shaish, the Wind of Death. They are the most insular and most distrusted of the Orders, even among themselves, for they always seek to reveal any within their own ranks that fall to their weakness and delve into the dark and hated arts of necromancy. The best trained and seasoned wizards of this Order can hold in their hands the power over life and death, able to crush a man's heart within his chest without even touching him, or extend his life well beyond its natural span. Not to be confused with necromancy, the death wizards of the Amethyst Order can control spirits, summon winds of death, and even steal the souls of the living. Unfortunately, 
The very nature of the orders and the types of magic they study can lead to friction between colleges, especially those opposite of them on the wheel of magic. Those of the Jade Order will without doubt dislike and show certain disdain against those violent pyromancers of the Bright Order, but seldom will they come to any disagreement with those of the Golden or Celestial Orders. These are, of course, generalities, but many will attest that the friction between colleges is there. Regardless, their training and testing is so rigorous that at the end they rarely end up fighting in open conflict amongst themselves, as they know their main goal is to serve and protect the Empire as a whole. With time, the Imperial Colleges of Magic have flourished into fantastic learning centers, from which most, if not all, of the Battle Wizards of the Empire have originated. The Colleges now thrive, living up to the high hopes of Teclas and Magnus to become a vital and immovable institution. Truly the fate of the Old World, and the rest of the Warhammer world, is held in the hands of the Empire of Man, which should always be helped and given all the available tools to safeguard it from the ever-present lurking enemies of mankind and the encroaching grasp of chaos. On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.